Nestle, a multi-billion dollar company, has long maintained its monopoly in the food and beverage industry. It produces a variety of products like baby food, bottled water, coffee, dairy products, and much more. From the outside, it looks like just another harmless company. But when we dig in deeper, we find that the reality is much more sinister. Nestle is accused of some truly horrific scandals, including child labor, exploiting Nepal and Pakistan, and claiming water to not be a basic human right. Die eine Anschauung extrem würde ich sagen, wird von einigen von den äh, NGOs vertreten, äh, die darauf pochen, dass Wasser zu einem äh, äh, öffentlichen Recht erklärt wird. The story begins with the founder of Nestle, Mr. Henry Nestle, who was really fascinated in chemistry. As such, Henry became a pharmacist's assistant. His training in chemistry shaped his attitude and his future approach to business. As a constant innovator, he experimented with the production of everything, from lemonade to cement, before finally focusing on infant powder. After many trials and errors, Henry finally succeeded and made the world's first ever baby formula, which was a formulated mixture of cow's milk powder and sugar. Henry then creates a company in 1866 and names it Nestle to begin selling the products. And in no time, this new company was a success. Henry started receiving large new orders, so he opened up a factory to keep up with the demand. He then tried experimenting with new products like chocolates and other stuff. But little did he know that people would love his chocolates so much that the company's sales skyrocketed, which naturally made him one of the richest men in the country. Henry then sold his company to live the rest of his life peacefully. The new owners, however, had big plans. They wanted to expand their business. They wanted Nestle to assert dominance on the global market. So they started off their plan by merging their company to a big rival named Anglo-Swiss, which created similar products at that time. Together, this company was called the Nestle Group. This group created various new products like new chocolates, beverages, and the infamous instant coffee powder. When Henry Nestle first created the baby powder, his intention was to help the mothers feed their children. Certainly not to replace the natural milk altogether, right? Well, here's the part where you're wrong. As said earlier, Nestle wanted to create monopoly in this industry. The baby powder had higher profit margins than any other product. They wanted to get more buyers for this product to make more money. They needed to do something to stand out from the rest and become the best. But how could they do it? The idea was fairly simple. They would simply undermine the natural milk and promote their own product as a superior alternative, claiming to have better nutritional content than the natural milk itself. So in the 1970s, they started their heavy advertisement of the baby formula. They started manipulating parents into thinking that Nestle's baby formula was a necessity for their babies. But in order to make parents believe this, Nestle started paying doctors and hospitals to promote their baby formula. In Africa and Asia, things were quite different. Nestle used to hire saleswomen who were dressed up like nurses and convince the mothers to use the baby formula instead. These saleswomen were paid on commission, meaning that the more they sold, the more money they get paid, thus encouraging them to sell even more. In developing countries, Nestle started giving out free samples to convince the mothers to buy more. This led to serious and fatal consequences. It is estimated that Nestle has caused over 10.9 million excess baby deaths, with its peak being in 1981, at 212,000 babies. Its worst impact was on the third world nations where there was no access to clean drinking water. The baby formula needed to be mixed with water in order for the babies to consume it, 
But as the dirty contaminated water was mixed with the formula by the desperate parents, it made the babies very ill and fatigued. The price of the baby formula wasn't necessarily pocket friendly. To make matters worse, parents couldn't keep buying the baby formula for their babies. To make the boxes last longer, the parents started diluting the formula to points where there was practically none mixed with water, which directly made the baby even more malnourished. However, the tale doesn't come even close to the end. Nestle has been found using forced labor and child slavery in their cocoa farms. This cheap labor technique almost went unnoticed until the year 2000, when a report came out that said Nestle was guilty of buying blood chocolate. They were also aware of the enslaved children working in their plantations. When Nestle was confronted with the evidence, it promised that it would make itself slavery free by the year 2005. The deadline came and went, and there were no practical changes in the plantations. So the International Labor Rights Fund filed a lawsuit against Nestle on the behalf of three Malian children who were claimed that Nestle used to smug children to the Ivory Coast, where they were ill-treated, enslaved, and made it to work in bad conditions. Nestle, however, responded to this, saying that it was impossible for them to keep track of everything and were trying to make the conditions better. In 2001, Nestle demanded $6 million from the Ethiopian government, which is one of the poorest countries in the world, to a conflict dated back to the 1970s, when a military regime in the country seized all the assets from foreign companies and nationalized them. Many years later, Nestle regained those assets from a different company and then sued the government. At the time of this demand, Ethiopia was struck with a severe famine which affected the lives of more than 13.2 million people. And did the Ethiopian government pay Nestle the money back? The Ethiopian government at the time offered Nestle a sum of $1.5 million, as it was the most they could pay at that time. The Nestle group agreed upon the sum of $1.5 million. In 2005, Nestle's CEO said that having access to water wasn't a basic human right. Die darauf pochen, dass Wasser zu einem uh, um, öffentlichen Recht erklärt wird. After this, the media heavily criticized the CEO for his words. However, actions speak better than words, and the actions were really bizarre and scandalous. In 2013, Pakistan, Nestle began diverting clean water away from the villages and towns and then began bottling water in their factories and selling these bottles back to the same people they took the water away from, with a much higher price. Nestle had taken so much water that thousands had to drink dirty contaminated water instead because many of them couldn't afford the expensive water. This strategy was seriously genius, creating demand for something and supplying it at a very high price. This sinister strategy led Nestle to make a lot of cash. It is believed that Nestle has sucked land dry at many places and made the water level fall hundreds of feet. But this strategy wasn't only used in developing countries. For example, California was suffering a severe water shortage. Many companies halted or completely stopped their operations. Nestle did the opposite and continued to pump 705 million gallons of fresh water from California's fresh water lakes and water parks raiding the state's water reserves and selling it back to the people. When asked about this, Nestle's CEO said that if he could drain more of California's water for more money and profit, he would do it. What is even more bizarre is that Nestle has only paid $200 to take almost 130 million gallons of fresh water from states like Michigan. If we calculate how much Nestle has made from this huge amount of water, it comes somewhere between 100 to 130 million dollars, which is almost a 65 million percent increase. This shows us that the sinister companies can go to far extent just to fill their own pockets. They might never think about the consequences that may occur due to their actions. So as the curtain falls on this story, remember that our choices matter. 
As consumers, we hold the power to demand transparency, ethical practices, and positive change. Let's raise our voices and hold corporations accountable. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope you like this video. Please make sure to subscribe. Thank you.